Questions oral. Oral questions. The Honourable Opposition House Leader. revealed in the tapes last week proved that the Prime Minister has not been telling the truth. The Prime Minister not only had the knowledge about the pressure being applied on the former Attorney General, but he and his office were in fact orchestrating it. Wow. As the clerk said, the Prime Minister wanted his way and he was going to get it. Now I know I'm not allowed to say that the Prime Minister lied, so my question is this. Why did the Prime Minister give deceitful and false information to Canadians regarding the pressure he and his office applied to the former Attorney General? As the Honourable Opposition House Leader knows that you can't do indirectly what you can't do directly, so I'd ask her to be careful with that. The Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, it's important that Canadians be reminded that the Prime Minister gave unprecedented access to the former Attorney General. He waived sister client privilege as well as cabinet confidence. It's also important to note that the Prime Minister has taken responsibility for the breakdown of communication within his office as well as with the clerk of the Privy Council. It's important to note that the Justice Committee looked at this matter for over five weeks. They actually held meetings in public so that Canadians could hear. And it's also important to note that the Conflict of Interest and Ethics Commissioner is currently studying this matter. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Opposition House Leader. Mr. Speaker, Canadians are not buying the ever-changing saga that the Prime Minister is trying to peddle. First of all, he said there's nothing to see here. All allegations are false. Then second, we all heard it's Scott Bryson's fault. Yep. And now the blame is being placed and was placed on the former Attorney General. It was all her fault yep. for not saying Never no have. loudly and clearly yeah, enough to the Prime Minister. When, we're, when we heard the tapes and all of us heard, she said no to the Prime Minister. Yeah, so yeah. why does the Prime Minister just start telling, stop telling us just his perspective and tell us the truth? Yeah, yeah. The Honourable Government House Leader. Continue pointing fingers and trying to divide Canadians. What we know is that it's important for Canadians to be able to hear, and that's exactly why the Justice Committee sat down. They have members from both sides of the aisle on committee. They set parameters, and within those parameters, they asked the former Attorney General to appear. For the entire time that the former Attorney General was the Attorney General, the Prime Minister gave unprecedented access to ensure that uh, solicitor client privilege was waived as well as cabinet confidence so that Canadians could hear directly from witnesses. Is. The Justice Committee actually studied this matter over five weeks. The Conflict of Interest and Ethics Commissioner is currently studying this matter. The Honourable Opposition House Leader. But Mr. Yeah. Speaker, was the Prime Minister who instructed the Liberal MPs on the Justice and Ethics Committee to shut down the investigation? Yeah. Shut down. And you know what? They complied. But now, after we've heard the tapes, just yesterday, guess who said he's got more information to oh, give? Yeah. Gerald Butts. Oh. It is clear there is much more to this scandal. There is more information, and it comes right from the Prime Minister and from his office. So, Mr. Speaker, will the Prime Minister allow his Liberal MPs on the Justice Committee to reopen this important investigation? The Honourable Government House Leader. that sit on the Justice Committee will make those decisions for themselves. What's clear is by having uh, submissions to committee that the system actually does work. So when the former Attorney General was at committee and testified that the rule of law in Canada is intact, that Canadians can have confidence in their institutions, this once again proves that the work that committees do will continue to function. So the former Attorney General was able to submit new information, as were others, and I think it's important that they get to do their important work. Let's not undermine the work of our institutions. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Richmond, Arthabasca. Mr. Speaker, for nearly two months, the PM's interference scandal and his office has dragged on. On day one, he d denied this whole true story, and then he changed his version of events every week. Since Friday, we have an audio recording and written recordings that clearly confirm that the PM and his office have interfered, and they tried to cover up this scandal. So what will the, be the PM's new version of events today, or will he finally tell Canadians the truth? The Honourable House Leader. Mr. Speaker, we always tell Canadians the truth, and that's uh, also true for the members of the Justice Committee and the witnesses. Witnesses came, they, tes they testified, and now these facts are all public. It's important for Canadians to have the opportunity to hear for themselves, uh, and that is why the 
PM waived uh, cabinet confidence so that the witnesses could ap appear and testify. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Richmond, Arthur Basker. Mr. Speaker, the PM refused a public inquiry. He refused to testify at the Justice Committee. He refused that all witnesses involved uh, be able to testify. The Liberals themselves are saying that there was interference. They, we didn't invent this. The Liberals are sitting right here in this House now, and all we're asking them is to waive uh, uh, solicitor client privilege so we can hear the whole story. Jerry Butts has other documents to submit, and do we have the whole truth? The Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, to make sure Canadians can hear the truth, uh, well, that's why we waived cabinet confidence and uh, solicitor client privilege. Nothing on this file was off limits. What the com Justice Committee asked is what they received. And the Conservatives have continued to not listen to what witnesses have said. And on this side of the House, we respect our institutions, and we're going to continue to do so. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Westminster Burnaby. All that the Prime Minister has said in, for 12, uh, two months has been disproved, and the audio recording was made public uh, on this uh, essence scandal that involving the Prime Minister. The very principles that underpin our democracy are at stake, the rule of law, the independence of our judiciary, and equality in terms of Canadians, Canada's institutions. The Prime Minister has lost his credibility. We need a public inquiry. Will the government start one now? The Honourable House Leader. Mr. Speaker, we know that the members sitting on the Justice Committee have studied this file, and the Prime Minister did waive cabinet confidence and solicitor-client privilege so that the former Attorney General could testify, and we know that the committees are doing their work, and we know that the Ethics commis Commissioner is doing his work because there is an inquiry underway right now, and we are going to respect their work, but I think that the NDP should know that once one of their MPs that asked for more documents, and that is exactly why the former uh, AG did give them. This scandal is not going away. Every day there is fresh evidence that the Prime Minister and his chief advisers misled this House and misled Canadians. And no evidence so far has been as compelling and as devastating to the Prime Minister's case as the audio recording that Canadians heard this weekend. The Prime Minister should stop hiding or trying to talk his way out of this. He needs to do the right thing. Will he come clean with Canadians by calling a public inquiry now? Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, the Justice Committee sat and they had witnesses appear at every step. The opposition, including the NDP, said that the committee wouldn't meet, witnesses wouldn't appear. They said that the former Attorney General would not be able to speak uh, and share her story. The Prime Minister waived solicitor client privilege as well as cabinet confidence to ensure that Canadians could hear everything that they should get to hear because we believe that that is exactly how it should be. The former Minister also confirmed that she had nothing further to offer for a formal process. That's within her testimony, and we know that all facts are now on the table. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honourable Member for Disnethy, Miss Nethy, Churchill River. Last Wednesday, the Prime Minister and his Liberal Party friends laughed at the members of Grassy Narrows First Nation as they were thrown out of an exclusive fundraiser. They had no other chance to ask him directly for justice after decades of mercury poisoning in their community. Apologies from the Prime Minister aren't good enough anymore. Chief Randy Turtle doesn't accept the Prime Minister's apology because his community needs actions and not words. Will the Prime Minister commit to visiting Grassy Narrows immediately. Here, here. Minister of Crown Indigenous Relations. I thank the member for her question and for her advocacy. The people of Grassy Narrows have suffered for generations. We continue to work with the community to support their needs and remain, remain steadfast in our commitment to build a health facility in the community. The minister is looking forward to meeting with Chief Turtle to determine how we can continue moving this critical work forward. It's imperative that we all work together, the government of Canada, the province and the community, to ensure that the people of Grassy Narrows get the support they need like they didn't under 10 years of that government that's doing all the heckling.
The Honourable Member for saint hyacinthe Pago. Mr. Speaker, they expect more. Members of the Grassy Narrows First Nations are asking for justice after decades of mercury poisoning in their community. Last week, the Prime Minister mocked them when he th they were thrown out of his fundraiser. This is not leadership. Leadership is engaging with people. It's going to Grassy Narrows and seeing what people are experiencing. It's keeping one's promises. The Prime Minister's apology is not enough. Will he commit to visit visiting Grassy Narrows immediately? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, the residents of Grassy Narrows have suffered for generations, and we're going to continue to work with this community to meet their needs, and we remain faithful to our commitment to establish a health institution in their community. The minister would be happy to meet with uh, minister, uh, Leader Turtle to determine how we continue to advance this crucial work. For Lakeland. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister told Canadians that no one ever raised concerns with him about his many attempts to interfere in the criminal prosecution of SNC-Lavalin. But the recorded phone call and text messages released last week prove that's blatantly false. The former Attorney General told the Prime Minister and his top officials that their actions were, quote, entirely inappropriate, repeatedly. Both his top political advisor and top public servant have resigned in disgrace. When will the Prime Minister stop changing his story and tell Canadians the truth. Here, here. The Honourable Government House Leader. We believe that Canadians should get to hear exactly what's taking place, and that's why all Justice Committee member meetings took place in public. And that's also why the Prime Minister um, waived Sister Client privilege as well as Cabinet confidence to ensure that when witnesses appear, they would be able to share their testimony. Canadians are listening and able to engage. We know that additional documents have been provided that actually substantiate and just confirm exactly what the testimony had been thus far. Mr. Speaker, it shows that the, the system is working and that people are able to submit documents, and that's exactly how it should work. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Sure. The Honourable Member for Lakeland. But the Prime Minister didn't fully remove the restraints, and new information and evidence has been submitted to the committee, so clearly their work isn't done. The Prime Minister also told Canadians to heed Michael Wernick's words, and oh, we did. The recording proves Wernick threatened the former Attorney General if she did not do the Prime Minister's bidding and stop the independent criminal prosecution of SNC-Lavalin. Clearly, the PM knew all along and directed the coordinated campaign to bully the Attorney General to interfere, and he was told it was wrong over and over. When will the Prime Minister finally tell Canadians the truth? Well, government House Leader. Gave unprecedented uh, waivers for, so that the information could be shared in public, so that Canadians could hear directly from themselves. Nothing related to the matter was off limits. The waiver actually covered the entire time of the former Attorney General's entire term, and it covers the whole period during which the allegations were made. Members that sit on the Justice Committee they set parameters for the study to ensure that that study would be able to be done to the best. Uh, the Prime Minister waived solicitor client privilege as well as cabinet confidence, so that Canadians could hear exactly for themselves. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Charlebourg, Au Saint Charles. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister has asked Canadians to listen to Michael Vernick, and we did so. He said that the former Attorney General did not raise her concerns to him with regard to negotiating a plea deal with SNC-Lavalin, but we now know that she did so on several occasions. Canadians aren't buying this, and they realize that the PM has no credibility in this affair. When will the Prime Minister stop changing his story and tell Canadians the truth? The Honourable House Government House Leader, the PM waived solicitor client privilege and cabinet confidence so that those who have information can speak openly. This is unprecedented. This file, nothing was off limits on this file, and the waiver applied to the whole mandate of the former uh, Attorney General. It was the whole period of time during which there were allegations. All the facts have now, are now public, and the Ethics Commissioner is continuing his work and a file is open. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Charlebourg, Au Saint Charles. Mr. Speaker, the government is controlling the Justice Committee and they want to hear what they want to hear. There was 11 witnesses that were asked by the opposition that were refused. Uh, the 
Prime Minister, does he realize the, the danger of uh, undermining the justice system? We don't live in a dictatorship. The, are we supposed to believe that nothing has happened? When will he stop misleading Canadians? We want to know the truth. The Honourable Government House Leader, Canadians have to be able to hear the truth, and that is exactly why the Prime Minister waived solicitor client privilege and cabinet confidence so that witnesses could appear and share their testimony. We know that the Canadians will have every opportunity to look at all the proceedings of the Justice Committee because they were public. And we know that our members sitting on the Justice Committee are doing their work, and we see that the, the Conservatives are taking uh, directions from their leading leader, and that's the only, the only way they operate. February, the Prime Minister said, I would recommend that people pay close heed to the words of the Clerk of the Privy Council. Last Friday, Canadians did just that when they heard the Clerk carrying out orders from the Prime Minister pressuring the former Attorney General to cut SNC-Lavalin a special deal. The tape makes it clear that political interference in an ongoing criminal proceeding was happening at the highest levels of this government. The tape doesn't lie. So why doesn't the Prime Minister start telling the truth? Yeah. Honourable Government House Leader. Hear the truth, and that's exactly why Justice Committee members were able to have their meetings in public. That's a decision they took, and that's what took place. The Prime Minister waived solicitor client privilege as well as cabinet confidence because Canadians do deserve to be able to hear the truth. It's also important to note that the former Attorney General said that the rule in Canada, in law, the rule of law in Canada, is intact, and that the rule of law was followed. And the Prime Minister recognizes that we can always improve our institutions, and that's why he accepted responsibilities for the breakdown of communication and trust within his office and we put measures to move forward in an even better way, we will continue to deliver for Canadians. Member for Chilliwack Hope. The tape makes it clear that the Prime Minister was demanding a special deal for SNC-Lavalin. We heard the clerk clearly when he said that the Prime Minister is going to find a way to get it done one way or another. He's in that kind of mood. The tape yeah. removes all doubt that there was a coordinated campaign to interfere in an ongoing criminal prosecution of SNC-Lavalin and that the Prime Minister himself was orchestrating it. In light of this damning new evidence, Will the Prime Minister just finally end the cover-up and start telling the truth? The Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, to ensure that Canadians can hear the truth, that's exactly why Justice Committee members had their meetings in public. That's exactly why the Prime Minister waived solicitor client privilege as well as cabinet confidence. Mr. Speaker, it's also important to note that the Prime Minister as well as the Clerk of the Privy Council in that same recording confirmed that this was a decision for the former Attorney General to take. They confirmed within that same recording that those were tools that were only available to the Attorney General. What we know is that the former Attorney General took a decision and that decision remains the case today. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Order, I'd ask the Honourable Opposition House Leader and others not to be speaking when someone else has the floor. The Honourable Member for Timmins, James Bay. Mr. Speaker, you can tell a lot about a man by what he thinks is funny. Witness the Prime Minister using grassy narrows to be the butt of his jokes for his rich friends at the Laurier Club. Mercury poisoning is a nightmare. I have seen the effects of Minamata disease on children in grassy narrows. And yet grassy narrow survivors had to pay top dollar to the Liberal Party to even get close to getting to the Prime Minister. And he thinks this is funny? Does he understand that he has shown a fundamental lack of moral compassion and leadership? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Mr. Speaker, our government is steadfast in our commitment to build a new health facility in Grassy Narrows. We continue to work with the community to support their needs, and the Minister is looking forward to meeting Chief Turtle to determine how we can continue to move forward on this important issue. It is imperative we all work together, the Government of Canada, uh, the Province of Ontario, and the community, to ensure that the people of Grassy Narrows get the supports they need. Oh. Oh. For, for Timmins, James Bay. Well, he deserved better than Cheap laughter.
laughs from the Prime Minister, the frat boy, because he promised the people of Grassy Narrows that he would clean up that river, and he broke that promise, but he keeps his promises to his friends at the Laurier Club, which is why he sent Michael Wernick in to push 17 times in 17 minutes to get the Attorney General to overturn the SNC investigation. Thank you for your donation to the Liberal Party, even if it is an illegal donation. What happened to his promise of ethical and moral government? The Honourable Parliament, the Secretary of the Ministry of Indigenous Services. Mr. Speaker, I am very proud of, of the work that we've done as a government. Since being elected in 2015, we have found $17 billion of new dollars to invest in education, in the environment, in infrastructure. Here, here. We, have, we have removed 81 long-term water drinking advisories. Mr. Speaker, that party over there committed to balancing the budget at all costs. Thank God that Canadians thought different and elected us. The Honourable Member. The Honourable Member for Beauport Limoilou. Order. The Honourable Member for for Beauport Limoilou. Mr. Speaker, last week, confidential information with regard to a Supreme Court appointment was reported in the media. Let's be clear. The objective of this media link was to lead Canadians to believe that there was a conflictual relationship between the PM and the AG, and this was recent. We, let, everything points to the fact that this media leak came from the PM, and this was a smear campaign. He has uh, tarnished the, relation, the reputation of Glenn Joyel. Will the Minister of Justice uh, investigate this breach of privacy? The Honourable Minister for Justice. We are proud of our process, not only for the appointment of judges at the Supreme Court, but also with regard to the selection of judges. Mr. Speaker, we're going to make sure that this will continue in the future, and we're going to appoint uh, top quality judges through a reliable and transparent process. Eastman. Well, Mr. Speaker, in an attempt to undermine the credibility of the former Attorney General, the Prime Minister attacked the sitting Chief Justice of Manitoba. The former Attorney General didn't just pull his name out of a hat. It came from a list recommended by an independent panel. The Prime Minister doesn't respect the independence of our justice system, the confidentiality of the court appointment process, or whose reputation he drags through the mud. The Justice Minister has said this leak was inappropriate. Will there be an investigation into who from the Prime Minister's office did this leak? Minister of Justice. Speaker, we're proud of our judicial appointments process, both for superior courts across the country and for the Supreme Court of Canada. And, Mr. Speaker, one of the reasons why we had to fix it was precisely because Prime Minister Harper at the time rendered, rendered the... In, actually went, was in conflict with the Chief Justice of Canada at the time. Mr. Speaker, we have done better. We have a, we have a process that is full of integrity, and we're going to continue forward in that direction. Order. I'm having trouble hearing the answers we need to hear. The questions and the answers. Order. The Honourable Member for Selkirk, Interlake Eastman. Mr. Speaker, the Justice Minister just besmirched the appointment process for all justices. It's shocking that the Prime Minister thinks that he's above the law, whether it's pressuring his own Attorney General to influence the independent prosecutor or leaking details to damage the reputation of a sitting judge. This Prime Minister's government is corrupt. Canada's legal community, the OECD and Transparency International have serious concerns about the Prime Minister's scandals. Will the Liberals launch an investigation into this leak? Yes or no? Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, as I've stated on numerous occasions, we have confidence in our institutions, and that's why we know that committees can do their work. When it comes to one of the matters that the member has referenced, the conflict of interest and in ethics commissioner is investigating this matter. We know that there's an ongoing court case. The former Attorney General, in her appearance at committee, confirmed that the rule of law in Canada is intact and that the law was followed at all times. We recognize that we can always strengthen and improve our institutions, and that's why this government has taken measures to ensure that we continue working hard, raising the bar 
so we deliver for Canadians. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member for Niagara Falls. Order. Mr. Speaker, I don't know why this is always so difficult uh, for the Liberals here. Last week, the Manitoba Bar Association issued a very scathing statement regarding the confidentiality of the judicial selection process by the compromisation of Chief Justice Joyelle's recommendation. Now, this serious breach of confidentiality under the Liberals has violated that justice's privacy and undermines Canadians' confidence in our judicial yep. process. So, Mr. Speaker, why is it so difficult for him to do the right thing, contact the Privacy Commissioner and get a, an investigation of this? That's what should be done. It shouldn't be that difficult. Well, the Minister of Justice. Speaker, we have put into place a judicial appointment process across Canada for both the Supreme Court as well as for Superior Court justices. That is unparalleled, Mr. Speaker, in its rigor, its transparency, and in its outcomes. We've appointed outstanding judges, over 260 since we took office, Mr. Speaker, and we'll continue to do that. Uh -oh. Member for Windsor Tecumseh. Mr. Speaker, families in Windsor will pay the price because Liberals again refuse to fight for them. Fiat Chrysler will eliminate the third shift at the Windsor Assembly Plant. That's 1,500 jobs plus the suppliers. Uh, this Prime Minister has done nothing to implement a national auto strategy. In every opportunity he had to save the manufacturing sector, he chose to abandon it. When will this Prime Minister finally stand up for Canadian workers and implement a national automotive manufacturing strategy and protect jobs. Here, here. The Honourable Minister of Innovation. We're very disappointed to hear about the news in Windsor. We know how difficult the FCA third shift uh, shutdown was for the workers and their families. That's why I immediately visited the leadership of FCA in Windsor, along with the Unifor leadership, to talk about what we can do to protect these jobs. Our government has been very clear about supporting the automotive sector. We've invested in 40 different projects that's helped leverage $6 billion worth of investments since, since 2015, and will continue to support the automotive sector. Mr. Speaker. Honourable member for Windsor West. Well, Mr. Speaker, Chrysler is investing $4.5 billion in Detroit, creating 6,000 jobs. GM is investing in Michigan, creating thousands of jobs. Meanwhile, GM Oshawa is closing, losing thousands of jobs. Windsor is losing jobs in the thousands. Brampton, hundreds of jobs. These automakers are investing in the future, just not here in Canada. The minister left $800 million in a fund from last year's budget, while opportunity escaped and others beat him to a new, cleaner, greener auto jobs plan. Will the minister finally turn around a losing record and make sure that the Windsor Assembly Plan has a new product? Here, here. Oh, minister of Innovation. Fundamentally disagree with the member opposite. If you look at the track record of the previous Conservative government under Stephen Harper, they lost 30,000 jobs in the automotive sector before the recession. The first three years of our government, 6,000 new jobs were created in the automotive sector. More importantly, we have put forward a fund of $2 billion, the Strategic Innovation Fund, that's been used by the automotive sector. That's helped leverage $6 billion worth of investments here in Canada, Mr. Speaker. We always have and always will defend the automotive sector and the auto workers. Mr. Speaker, tax evasion remains a concern for Canadians, and that's why our government has invested over a billion dollars in the Canada Revenue Agency to equip it with the tools it needs to fight tax cheats. On April 3rd, it'll be three years since the earliest reports broke on the Panama Papers. The Minister of National Revenue has previously informed us that CRA identified 894 Canadians through this leak of information. Can the Minister update us on any progress in CRA's investigation of these Canadians? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to thank my Honourable colleague from Thérèse de Blainville for his excellent question and his interest in the matter of tax evasion. Our government has indeed invested over a billion dollars in the Canada Revenue Agency to ensure it has the necessary tools to fight tax cheats. I'm pleased to announce that last week, CRA executed two search warrants in relation to a tax evasion case where there was an alleged attempt to evade $77 million in taxes. Our plan is working. We're starting to see results. Tax cheats can no longer hide, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Beauport-Limoilou, Charlevoix. 
On Friday, more evidence was released from the former Attorney General, clearly demonstrating that the Prime Minister conducted a campaign of political interference in the criminal prosecution of SNC-Lavalin. We still have a lot of questions, Mr. Speaker. In October, the Prime Minister's advisor, Mathieu Bouchard, said, quote, We can have the best policy in the world, but we need to get re-elected. What did he mean? The Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, we know that Canadians have to learn the truth, and that's precisely why the Prime Minister waived cabinet confidence and solicitor-client privilege so that the witness could appear before the committee. For six weeks, there were meetings at which Canadians had the opportunity to hear for themselves. But what is clear is that the Conservatives made a decision before the Justice Committee decided to discuss this case, and they don't want to hear the truth. It's up to them, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It seems like we're hearing new and new truth coming every day, which would warrant the Justice Committee to investigate further. Liberals are saying that there is nothing new on this SNC scandal. But last week, we had heard substantial new evidence from the former Attorney General. And Gerald Butts has also tabled new evidence with the committee. Clearly, the Justice Committee's investigation was not complete. Canadians still want answers to questions like, what did the Prime Minister's Chief of Staff mean when she said she doesn't want to debate legalities anymore? Here, 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 here. Honourable Government House Leader. It's important that Canadians be able to hear from themselves, and that's exactly why, once again, the Prime Minister waived solicitor client privilege as well as cabinet confidence. Mr. Speaker, this is an unprecedented action that took place because the Prime Minister recognizes that it's important for Canadians to be able to hear for themselves. These committee meetings took place in public and Canadians were able to hear. Members of the committee asked for additional documents to be submitted and those documents have now been submitted that once again confirms that the system is working and Canadians can have confidence in the system. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honourable Member for Kamloops, Thompson Caribou. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister's staff said, quote, it's just a bit ironic that she wants an alternative justice process to be available in one sense, but not for SNC. It seems like this entire Liberal government has been seized with getting bribery charges dropped against SNC. And just a little reminder, that included $30,000 for Gaddafi's son for prostitutes in oh, Canada. Yeah. So yeah. the finance minister believes that this company should get a special deal. Simple question, will they let him come to Justice Committee and explain to Canadians why? Government House Leader. We know that the Justice Committee studied this matter over five weeks, which is longer than most pieces of legislation is even studied at committee. We know that the Conflict of Interest and Ethics Commissioner is currently investigating this matter. We know that there's an ongoing court case. And we know that when it comes to deferred prosecution agreements, this is a new tool that went through the House of Commons, was voted on, and it is a legal measure that can be considered. What's interesting is that we hear this sanctimony coming from the other side, but where was that member of the Conservative Party when they voted against against uh, uh, measures for women and gender programs, when they voted against programs for seniors, when they voted against national... Order. Order. The Honourable Member for Leeds, Grenville, Thousand Islands and Rideau Lakes. Mr. Speaker, the Liberals continue to spin, 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 and the truth just keeps on putting them down. We heard more shocking evidence from the former Attorney General that affirmed her testimony that the Prime Minister desperately tried to discredit. The Liberals are saying there's nothing new on the SNC-Lavalin scandal, but Jerry Butts sent new evidence to the Justice Committee to attack the former Attorney General's mm. credibility yet again. There are plenty of unanswered questions, and Canadians deserve answers. Yep. So here's a simple one for the Prime Minister. When will the Prime Minister end the cover-up? The Honourable Government House Leader. Let's try this again, Mr. Speaker, and I'll try to keep it very simple. Members that sit on the Justice Committee, there are members from all parties that are recognized in the House that sit on the Justice Committee. They came together and they set parameters when it comes to the allegations that are currently being challenged or attacked by the opposition member. 
Then, justice committees were able to ask witnesses to appear. Witnesses appeared, and to ensure that Canadians could hear the truth, the Prime Minister waived solicitor-client privilege, as well as cabinet confidence, for the entire time for which the allegations were being challenged. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Saskatoon West. Here, the Canadian canola sector, which employs over 250,000 Canadians, and contributes $26.7 billion to the Canadian economy is under attack, having gotten wrapped up in the Liberal government's dispute with China. Last week, the Agriculture Committee convened an emergency meeting to address this crisis. Shamefully, the Liberals blocked the ministers from being questioned. Our Canadian farmers deserve answers. What assurances can the minister provide farmers that Liberals are resolving this crisis for Canada's most valuable agricultural commodity? Here, here. Here, here. Agriculture. Mr. Speaker, I understand the worries of our farmers. I was in Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba last week and the week before to speak with farmers, to speak with the stakeholders, and I can assure you that it is a very high priority for our government. The uh, CFI, the Canadian Food Inspection Agency, is having dis discussions with their counterparts in China, and we are working on finding a science-based solution. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for berthier masquinonger Mr. Speaker, last week, the Liberals prevented the Agriculture Committee from calling ministers to appear on the canola crisis. Canola contributes $26.7 billion to the Canadian economy and employs some 250,000 Canadians all across the country. Our canola producers shouldn't have to bear the brunt of liberal mismanagement of this dispute with China. They're entitled to know what steps are being taken to address the situation. Since the Liberals don't want the ministers appearing before the committee, what is the government's plan of attack to address this crisis? The Honourable Minister. The canola crisis and the discussions with China are things that our government is taking very seriously. I've met with farmers and our provincial counterparts and the CFIA. They're doing their work with their counterparts in China. And tomorrow afternoon with the Minister of International Trade and Diversification, we're going to appear before the committee. For Carlton. Prime Minister said on February 15th, if anyone, including the former attorney, attorney General, had issues with anything they might have experienced in this government, it was her responsibility to come forward. It was their responsibility to come forward. And no one did. Now we have audio recordings where she, in fact, did come forward and said seven times in 17 minutes that his interference was inappropriate. Does the Prime Minister really expect us to believe he didn't know about that conversation? Honourable yeah. Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, it's important to note that the Prime Minister has taken responsibility for the breakdown of communication and trust within his office. He has put measures in place because we always believe that we can strengthen our institutions and the way we work on behalf of Canadians. It's also been stated that the Prime Minister was not briefed by the clerk on his conversation with the former. Attorney General, Minister of Justice, and the Prime Minister also stated that he should have spoken directly with the former Minister about this matter. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Carleton. The only problem with that story is that the Clerk of the Privy Council said to uh, the former Attorney General at the time that he would be reporting back to her the substance, uh, to the Prime Minister, the substance of the conversation they were having. And in that conversation, she warned the clerk no less than seven times that the actions of the prime minister and the clerk were totally inappropriate. Now the prime minister expects us to believe he didn't know a thing about that. How is that possible? Honourable Government House Leader. Canadians would be able to hear for themselves. The Prime Minister actually waived solicitor client privilege as well as cabinet confidence. The Prime Minister also made sure that it was encouraged that members of the Justice Committee ask witnesses to appear so that Canadians could judge and hear for themselves. I know that the members opposite cannot fathom that members of a committee could do the work on their own because they're so used to being instructed by their leader, but that's not the approach that we've 
take on this side. We think it's important that we respect our institutions, including committees, also when it comes to the work of the Conflict of Interest and Ethics Commissioner. Well done. Order. The Honourable Member for Carleton. The Prime Minister sent out the clerk to claim that he never told the Prime Minister about this spectacular telephone conversation that we've now heard through audio recordings. And the clerk claims that's because the Prime Minister went on vacation the very next day. Well, we now know that wasn't true. He didn't leave for vacation for two more days, and the clerk has testified that the Prime Minister, notwithstanding vacations, is always available 24-7. Now. Is the Prime Minister really going to expect us to believe that he would not have known about this explosive conversation? The Honourable Government House Leader. The member chooses to pick and choose the points and say what he wants to say and listen to what he wants to hear. Mr. Speaker, we know that Canadians are paying attention and Canadians should be able to hear the truth for themselves. And that's exactly why the Prime Minister waived solicitor client privilege as well as cabinet confidence so that the former Attorney General could appear at committee. Members of the Justice Committee asked for additional documents to be presented, and those documents have now been presented. Within that same audio recording, the clerk also confirmed that the Prime Minister said that these were tools and decisions for the former Attorney General to take. The former Attorney General took the decision, and it remains a decision. Honourable Member, order for Toronto, Danforth. Mr. Speaker, climate change is real and the cost of inaction is enormous. It is disappointing that while climate change is having a real impact on the health and well-being of Canadians, the Conservatives still don't have a plan to protect our environment. If you don't have a plan on climate change, you don't have a plan for the economy or for the future. Can the Parliamentary Secretary for the Minister of the Environment please advise this House what actions our government is taking to fight climate change? Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Thank the member for her question and for her continued advocacy to protect our environment. As of today, it is no longer free to pollute in Canada. Hello. 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 Mr. Speaker, the great news is that in her province, eight out of ten families will actually be better off as a result of the climate action incentive that they will claim on their taxes each year. The fact is, that during the next federal election, Canadians are going to have a choice between a government that takes climate change seriously or conservative politicians like the leader of the opposition or Doug Ford who would bury their head in the sands. It may be April Fool's Day, but the biggest joke on the Hill is their climate plan. The Honourable Member for St. Albert, Edmonton. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister told Canadians to listen to Michael Wernick, and we did. And last week we heard new evidence that further proves that the Prime Minister directed a coordinated campaign to stop the criminal prosecution of SNC-Lavalin, thereby interfering with the prosecutorial discretion of the former Attorney General. So, why, when will the Prime Minister stop changing his story and start telling the truth? Yeah. Honourable Government House Leader. Stated at committee that the rule of law in Canada is intact, that Canadians uh, can have confidence in their institutions, and that the rule of law was followed. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister recognizes that we can always improve and strengthen our institutions, and that's why he acknowledged that there was a breakdown of communication and trust within his office, and he's put measures in place to ensure moving forward we have even stronger systems in place. And the Prime Minister also acknowledged that he should have spoken directly with the former minister to, on this matter, and I think that's important to note is that the Conservatives are picking and choosing, but we should look at all the facts. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Muski Nejet Temiskwatale Basque. Over 22 million Yemenis are in extreme distress due to a four year long conflict. The Liberals announced 46.7 million in aid to Yemen in February. But Canada also authorized 15 billion worth of light armored vehicle exports to Saudi Arabia in 2016, in addition to weapon sales of over $500 million. Those arms are being used to blockade Yemeni ports, preventing humanitarian aid from getting through. Mr. Speaker, what's the point in giving humanitarian aid with one hand and preventing it from reaching civilians with the other? 
The Honorable Parliament the Secretary for Consular Affairs. He supports the peace talks in Yemen. We call on parties to fully implement their commitments and to bring peace to the people of Yemen. We call for full access to humanitarian aid. This, we have announced additional millions to go directly towards saving people's lives in Yemen, as was referred to. Our government has also yet a UN motion mandating the UN Human Rights Commissioner to send investigators to Yemen to investigate crimes against humanity. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Miramichi, Grand Lake. Canada are experiencing, experiencing an infrastructure deficit after 10 years of neglect by the Harper Conservatives. For, far, for small communities, support from higher level of government is absolutely essential to getting crucial infrastructure built. Mr. Speaker, could the Minister of Economic Development inform the House of the recent steps our government has taken to help rural communities address infrastructure shortcomings. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I'd like to thank my honorable colleague for his question. Rural municipalities are eager to get infrastructure projects done. And we're, we know how important it is for them to have a dependable cooperative partner in the federal government. Absolutely. That's why in Budget 2019, we introduced a top-up of $2.2 billion, which will flow directly to municipal governments to get their infrastructure projects here, 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 underway. Here, here. While Conservatives across the country continue to show disrespect for municipalities, our government remains a dependable partner for rural communities. Thank you. The the Honourable Member for Barry Innisfil. After hearing the tape last Friday, uh, Canadians were able to get a clear picture of just how far the Prime Minister and his operatives were willing to go to stop the criminal proceedings of SNC-Lavalin. In fact, he, he being the Prime Minister, was quite determined on this, Michael Wernick said on the tape, to the former Attorney General. The Prime Minister has changed his story several times, and we've reached the point where he needs to speak the truth to real power, the real power being the people of Canada. When will the Prime Minister come clean and finally tell Canadians the truth? Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, Canadians deserve to get to hear the truth, and that's exactly why the Justice Committee was meeting in public, Mr. Speaker. And that's exactly why the Prime Minister waived solicitor-client privilege as well as cabinet confidence for the period of which the uh, Justice Committee determined parameters for them to be able to study this matter. These meetings took place in public, Mr. Speaker, so that Canadians could judge for themselves. The Conservatives will continue to speculate and pick and choose points, but we have confidence that Canadians are able to see all of the facts because they are all on the table, they are all in public. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Repentigny. At last, Mr. Speaker, at last, the Quebec government is paving the way to secular government. Because in Quebec, we believe the best way to protect all religions is for the government to have none. But the secularism bill came under attack by the Prime Minister before it could even be introduced. Will the Prime Minister promise to respect Quebec's intentions and not challenge Bill 21 in court? The Honourable Justice Minister. Mr. Speaker, our government has always defended the fundamental rights of all Canadians. The Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms protects the rights of all Canadians. You cannot pick and choose what you're going to protect and what you're not going to protect. Our position is clear, Mr. Speaker. It is not for government to dictate to people what they may or may not wear or believe. Yeah. The Honourable Member for Repentigny. When I hear that, I understand that this government is not at all interested in Quebec. Otherwise, they would know that secularism has been on the agenda since the Quiet Revolution. To this government, the bill on secular government is discriminatory. The Prime Minister said it's unthinkable that a free society would legitimize discrimination against anyone on the basis of religion. But it's the opposite. This bill is anti-discriminatory because it's one set of rules for all. Will the Prime Minister undertake to refrain from challenging Bill 21 in court? The Honourable Minister of Justice, Mr. Speaker, Canada is a secular country. 
and that's reflected in all our institutions. Government officials have the right to display their beliefs, and no one should have to choose between their religious beliefs and employment. It's everyone's responsibility to protect fundamental rights. Any attempt to erode those rights is unacceptable. Canada is open, inclusive, and diverse. The Honourable Member for Repentigny. Mr. Speaker, can, uh, I really don't understand that answer. The Prime Minister has made his bed and has already put the government of Quebec on notice. And I quote again, he said, people know full well that I will defend the Charter. Mr. Legault and all Quebecers know I take a firm stand on that. Is that some kind of threat? Will the federal government respect Quebec's intentions and refrain from undertaking or funding a court challenge to Bill 21? The Honourable Minister of Justice. Mr. Speaker, the government of Quebec has just tabled this legislation. We will take our time before commenting on the bill, but as I said, we are the party of the Charter. We will always stand up for the Charter. And it is not for government to determine whether someone has to make a choice between employment and displaying their religious belief. I'd like to point out to members that a former member of the House of Commons, a former federal minister, and former occupant of the chair and former premier of Quebec, the Honourable Jean Charest, is present in the gallery.